Well, let's touch base with someone that uh, might know a little bit more about what's been going on f- inside the French camp, uh, someone that's been there before, former France coach Philippe Saint-André joins us. How are you? Yeah, very well. Ah, comment ça va, good Philippe? Afternoon. Oh, your French is still good? Et c'est parfait, mon ami. <laughs> say Philippe, say Jim, uh, say pardon for the Francais équipe. Um, what the flippity flippity <laughs> flu is going on in French rugby, Philippe? Well, to be honest, I think, you know, it's a consequence of uh, 15 years or no vision, 15 years or our young players didn't have game time, then uh, it was possible to be French champion with 15 overseas players. And uh, now we are, we are suffering. We don't have too many solutions in a lot of different areas. Plus also, you know, the, the top 14, the, the money is huge. It's, it's a tough competition, but it's a slow competition. And, uh, and the French team was not the, was not the priority of French rugby for 15 years. And now, and now we suffer. We are tenth in the world, but it's our level at the moment. <laughs> and what do you make of the performance at the weekend? Is that down there as one of the worst French displays of all time? Yeah, but what it was terrible, it's, uh, we knew we are weak in winger, so we pick two centre on the wing, we pick a winger fullback. So we knew that uh, England will, will test them on the open under, will test them behind the behind the first line and and what he was terrible is the first action we lost the ball and and score and I think four or five times it was exactly the same, you know. So we knew it before the game and it happened on the game. So of course it was a lot of mistake of the players on the high ball. It was not enough urgency. But about the strategy, you know, it was it was terrible because we knew what England will do it before the game, and they did like uh, like if it was a training, you know. And if um, you know, obviously, a lot of people have said that. A lot of people have said that you knew what was coming. Um, one of the French players has come out in the press and said it was chaos. Nobody knew which position to play. Surely that's down to the players themselves and Jacques Brunel for on how to prepare the team. Is it that bad that they're not preparing the team in the right way, or what is the issue? But to be honest, it's uh, it shows that Jacques Brunel is the first time in the French history that he have uh, much more time to prepare the players because you know they were they were together two weeks before the Six Nations. So after the game of England, it was four weeks together. So you need to put things in place. But uh, what it showed, it was uh, we were quite surprised that after the game, players like Para and some other key, key players said that. They don't do enough. Uh, they don't do enough on the training. You know, it's funny because uh, the last two coach before the players say they were doing too hard. They were co- training too hard, but now they say they don't do it enough. So, but uh, it shows that there must be some friction at the moment between the between the the players and about the staff. But they need to put uh, put right because you know we play we play Scotland. Uh, in two weeks, you know, Scotland will come uh, and they will be desperate to beat us. And if we lost again, you know, it will be the first time for, I don't know, for maybe ever that we can play the wooden spoon in uh, in Italy in a uh, in few weeks, you know. And then looking at some of the players, obviously Matthew Bastero came back into the team. Uh, they dropped on Tamak. You talked about some of the younger players. And let's not forget the French under-20s won the World Cup in the summer. Um, as the best under twenties team in the world, why did they go back to Bastero and drop uh, Untermac for this England game? Um, and why aren't the players taking the responsibility? You've coached in England and Sale and had success there and over in Toulon as well. So you know the differences between an English system and organisation and you know, the French, where it's just a bit of play, play, play. Yeah, but you know the, the organisation of the French team is a chaos. You know it's. <laughs> During four years, I tried to change things, but it was, uh, I, lost, I lost the battle, I lost the war, you know. Uh, me, when I was coached, twice we won the first two games in the Six Nations, and on the third week, all the players were going back to play with their club, and it was terrible. At least now they, want, they don't do this anymore, but uh, I think, you know, play, 
players are not enough fit because top 14 is quite a slow game. But it's a long season. I think you know. I think we need a top 12. We not, we don't need a top 14 if we want to compete. After I think uh, the big problem, the biggest problem for me, it's uh, before everybody was dreaming to go to the French team. You know, guys was training hard to go to the French team since the last seven, eight years. I feel that the guys, you know, they say, fuck, you know, I'm going to, sorry for my English, That's but perfect. we're going to France, we're going to, we're going to the French team, we'll take a lot of bad things with the newspaper, we lost game, and, you know, it's, we need to, to change the spirit, we need, we need to change the system, and I think the federation, you know, they need to put much more money, much more resources, much more income, in the French team if we want to uh, to be back in the top six, you know. And talking about the Federation, a lot of people are talking about Bernard Laporte's role and, and how involved he is. Do you think potentially he's running a little bit of that in terms of the team? Is that, with you know, the problems between him and Brunel? Can you give us any insight into that? But, to be honest, he, the surprise he was when he dropped, uh, when he sacked uh, Guinoves, you know, after... After two years, Guinoves was uh, uh, the best coach in, in club rugby and uh, uh, of the history. And uh, he sacked him. Apparently, he can cost nearly nearly three million euros to the French Federation. So this, you know, I think it's better to spend three million to uh, to fitness coach, to uh, uh, players, to availability than just pay back. Uh, uh, one coach and you sack. And after Jack Brunel, he, he was the assistant coach of Bernard Laporte during uh, eight years when he was uh, when when he was uh, the manager of the French team. So of course they have good relations, they are they are friends. But the problem, the result, you know, uh, uh, I think he, he coached certain certain games and we lost ten games. So it's uh, it's under. Uh, I think. It's, the result is terrible, so uh, it's a lot of pressure, the players say they are not happy, the results are not good, the public uh, are fed up to go and to, and to see the team uh, where we were battled completely in England, you know, because the crunch normally for the last 10 years is all the time quite tough and hard, but uh, last week after 30 minutes it was game over, so it's a, a lot, a lot of pressure in the French Federation and uh, in the French camp. And do you, do you think um, they might sort of get rid of Jacques Brunel? And if so, are there any other coaches in France that you'd look at? Maybe the Claremont coaches, Vern Cotter being mentioned potentially. Um, did, did France need a foreign coach that um, can sort of take away some of the French issues that you've got within the league system? Uh, I think more and more, a lot of people speak than uh, maybe the solution to have to have an overseas uh, coach. Uh, the problem at the moment is that the, the league uh, is have, have more cash than the French Federation. You know, I think the league is 115 million euro, and the French Federation is 100 million euro. Plus also because the French team don't perform well, uh, the first six nation game against. Uh, well, it was just 50 dozen people in one big stadium. So we are we are short of cash in the French Federation. And the moment the power are more in the league than on the French Federation. So it's quite uh, complicated. You know, it's a lot of politics. And, uh, and uh, you know, how we can say that the priority in the, is the French team when we when the final of the top 14 this year in 2019 will be the 15th June. Already you lost three or four week, weeks of, uh, of preparation of the World Cup, you know. So all the time we say, yeah, we put some resources on the French team, but it's all the time the top 14 win, you know. C'est fou, uh, so mon ami, c'est fou. Yeah, it, you know, it's, cr it, 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 it's crazy. And, uh, and we know that the guys, if the guys start in August, 50, finish the 15th June, after they need four weeks holidays, so they will start uh, the preparation of the World Cup uh, the 15th July, and we are so much behind the other team. 
I think we need four months of, uh, of preparation for the World Cup, and we we'll, and we will have less preparation than all the other countries in the world. Well, Goody was saying safe food. He knows about food. That's all I know, uh, <laughs> Philippe. Um, and what are you up to at the moment, Philippe? Are you looking to get back into coaching at, at the top level? I know we wanted to speak a little bit about these coaching clinics and these camps that you're running along with uh, Johnny Murphy. But before we do that, are you hoping to get back in at the top level at any point? Well, do you know, I, I enjoy, I coach 18 years, uh, uh, nine years in, in England, five years Selshark and Gloucester. After the French team, you know, uh, it's, it's difficult. I, if I have a great, great opportunity of a top club, why not? But at the moment, you know, I, I am like you. I work for French TV and French radio, and I have an academy. I put a lot of input in my PSA academy with, uh, with Murphy. With, uh, uh, we have the academy in Ireland, in England, in France, in Martinique. And we develop players with a... With a with the new, with GPS, with uh, uh, the new technology, I think some things that we are, we are very behind in the, in the French team, you know, but I think my, my, my view are quite open because I, I had work in England, I had work with 18, 19 nas different nationality, and we try to put this input on our, on our PSA Academy, and you know, I, I love it because it's, uh, it's just to, to try to bring skills and to bring the, the good attitude and the good spirit the good spirit in the game. If you want me to come over, though, Philippe, to do a bit of kick and coach, and I need loads of security because I don't think the French like me at the minute, especially Matthew Bastereau. No, at the moment, I don't think so. <laughs> in Toulon, between Mathieu Bastaro and, and Murat Bougela, I don't think so. You are welcome. <laughs> but uh, if you want to come to team, no problem. And I know you are. You like to eat well and you like to drink well. So don't worry, we'll be full of food. Lovely. No, please full don't. Of Philippe, Philippe, and no, a please. lot of beer. <laughs> and a lot of beer. And he needs cigarettes as well. <laughs> Philippe, I'm um, there for some skiing. Get, get me there for skiing. I'm all over it. Uh, Philippe, so just uh, lastly, so you're going to be in Teen in July, aren't you? So you're running a camp out of there three weeks in July in Teen. Am I right in saying that? Yeah, exactly. And it's, uh, and it's not just French uh, children. You know, last year we have... Uh, more than uh, 160 guys in three weeks and 18 different nationalities. We have children come from everywhere, Ireland, English, but also uh, Hong Kong and from very, very far away. And, it, and we do rugby, but also we on the pitch we speak half English, half French. So it's also, you know, to open the mind to the children. And it's, uh, and it's fantastic. And... Uh, if you want to come, the, the night is not bad also. <laughs> Good stuff. So, so, so how do I get involved? So if, if I want to find out how I can uh, get rid of the missus for, for three weeks and I might even leave the kids at home, do we need to check yeah. out our website or anything? Yes, it's on, on the PSA, or PSA Academy website. It's very, very easy. And uh, if you want to come to coach with me, uh, send me a, a very bad Twitter. I, I will answer to you with my mobile phone. And, uh, <laughs> <so we> can... <laughs> Perfect. And we can uh, and we can meet like this. Nice. Okay. Philippe, thank you very much for joining us, mate. And best of luck with your academies. Yeah. And let's hope uh, France can turn it around somehow, heading into the rest of the Six Nations and let's maybe not. the World Cup. Let's not. Merci, Philippe. Yeah. Merci. And, and, co and congratulations, England, because they, they were amazing. Oh, fantastic, fantastic, mon ami. C'est très, très bien. Take care, bye-bye. Merci, <laughs> Philippe. Bye-bye. Bon, bon voyage. <laughs> <laughs> Bon voyage, Jim. What are you on about? Fluent in French. You are fluent. F fluent. Good, good, lad. good lad. Good lad. Good, good lad. Um, he's a good bloke. I see him a bit around the grounds because he commentates for French TV on the Gallagher Premiership games. Um, he's a, you can hear it in his voice. He's a character, isn't he? Mm. Um, you know, he, he's had his hands burnt by the French Federation and various different things, but fair play, he's doing these academies and if he wants me to come to France and he's going to feed me like he says and water me like he says, as long as he's got security and it's nowhere near Toulon... Milk you as well. He can milk me, I'll be all right. <laughs> I'll be all right. We'll go skiing. We'll go skiing to Teen. 